Okay, my friends, this is very interesting. I have been reporting on the neutrinos that we discovered because we create a venturi. A venturi is nothing more than a, a rounded slot coming in here, very, very finely tuned. And when we did this, the light concussed and the black particles went away from the white particles, creating the muon and electron neutrinos. It separated them. They first started out here as light, not protons, light. So we're starting out with the tiniest particles that exist. When they hit that venturi, which is right here, they exploded. Now, in this stream, they are not split particles. They are glued together. All right, and here they are right here. In the stream, that's what they look like. So you have what they would call a muon, an electron neutrino muon electron neutrino together they make a photon separated they make strictly electrons we never saw the dark matter that's what i keep saying we can't find a dark matter can't find a dark matter there it is and it is gravity as well it pulls these together otherwise they push each other apart they hate each other this was from fermilab in 2013 and they were looking for this black particle and this little point particle they called it which this is, there it is. Okay, so here's Derek Mueller again from Veritasium. He's saying there's all kinds of problems with the standard model, and, and there is. It just does not work. But in addition to that, he's saying our mass would become infinite, so we can't go faster than the speed of light. They're working with equations instead of realistic, actually seeing what we can see. All right, this is Derek, <clears throat> Derek Mueller at Veritasium, really deep into physics, a very engaged mind, let's put it that way. So here he's saying, can we go the speed of light or faster? Well, I think we can go faster. And he, well, listen. Our mass would become infinite. But a recent experimental result has uh, suggested that neutrinos can go faster than light. Still, most physicists... All right. Neutrinos can go faster than light. Neutrinos are light. <laughs> They're not anything different than light. They make up light. Just think that, well, this result probably won't hold up to scrutiny because the principle of relativity is just uh, so well established nowadays. No, it's indoctrinated. If you don't stay with the theory of relativity and all nine, uh, Einstein and all of that Hubble and everything, and that space is a vacuum and there's no particles out there, you, they destroy you. Now, we know that the space is filled with light. I just showed you they are particles. They have magnetic push to shove. They push against their fields the same as the two magnets that are the same polarity push against their fields. And light coming from the, through space to the Hubble's telescope is absolutely meaningless because it, we can look out and see space is not homogeneous. It's filled up here and nothing out there, but it's got a ton of light in it, but that's just the background light. Everything else is chunks of particles here and there, so it's not homogeneous. Nothing they have said is correct. We are scrubbing through space. That's what's heating up our ionosphere way out in the, out in the outside edge to 2,700 degrees. It's not that it won't let the heat go out. It's that we're scrubbing against the particles in space. It's very, very simple if you can get yourself to be able to speak. And that's the truth. You can't speak. Because right now, if he'd have been speaking about the things I'm speaking about, he wouldn't have millions of subscribers. He's got, I don't know, millions of people. He's got 240,000 views on this. I mean, it's just amazing. And, but he's following the company line, and I think Derek and I should have a talk. I really want to, because it's just not right anymore. They know it's not right. Listen. But who knows? Perhaps one day we'll find a way to break what we thought was the universal speed limit. The speed of Yes, we did. I, I think so. But I'm not allowed to speak because I am not within that circle of, of people. Now, I'm going to put out a paper, that, and, and I'm going to finish up this video and back myself up and show. It's, it's as simple as this. This is all the whole damn thing is. Right there. That's it. That's it. I'm not kidding you. That's the new theory. They got it's a, a particle zoo, they call it. Well, there is nothing more than this right here, atomic vapor. All right, that's an electron, but we've never seen the dark side of an electron. 
Well, we've seen is the glowy one that bounces back at us and burns things and all that. A ton of those little electrons make up a ball like that, which is called a proton. 1837 of them or so. It could be 1835. It's going to be an uneven number. That gives it a positive polarity. It's going to want one more to make it into the neutral neutron. And that's exactly what it does away, one extra electron. Photons are nothing more than two little bar magnets back to back. That will burn into you and kill you if there's enough of them. This will just bounce off you primarily. When it impacts through the Venturi, we can get this to actually separate. All right, so that's the theory of the atomic vapor, and everything is made of that. You just keep making bigger and bigger balls of this, is bigger and bigger atoms. The periodic chart's got to go totally change too because these are not like one for hydrogen hydrogen is like 1845 or something like that it's going to be a ball like this with one extra electron on the outside but there's all kinds of isotopes and hydrogen one hydrogen two hydrogen three nothing here is set in stone I mean every one of these is just a sort of an area in the middle where it's stable but you can have a couple of extra electrons this way some over that way some over this way it, and that those are all fine. They're called isotopes. How could that happen? It would be impossible. Okay, my friends, I have some very, very outstanding news and very, very unusual. And you're going to have a hard time believing it, but it's true. All you have to do is follow the sequence of events. 2013, Fermi Lab put something out about a fixed particle and a point particle. And I said, yes, we found these. This is from 2015. These are from photons of light from a red laser through a pulse red laser through a very, very tiny tuned Venturi, which first of all showed us the particles, and then the particles actually separated. We could see the particles show up like this in a stream. You see right here? That's the light wave. And a wave is it comes in a wave form because there's a particle in there, which is this particle here. And this white portion here is bumping everything in front of it, creates a wave in front of it, just like a shock wave. And that's the shock wave right here. Now, because it went through a Venturi, a Venturi is known to accelerate, it's, and it's an atomizer. It breaks things down into their atomic bits. And that's exactly what happened. And we can see that particle was pulled out from its wave and separated here into the black and white, which is right here. The black went away from the white. And only the white could squirt through here. And then the black recombined right out here. And this is precisely what CERN and Fermilab see as well. Only they're using head-on collisions. And I alerted them to this um, in 2015. Like I said, this is I, I sent this to everybody in the world. And I actually went to the um, University of Geneva uh, through Coursera. <clears throat> just so that I could alert them to this. I said, take a look at this. What do you think? And they were impressed. It sounded to me like they were impressed. I thought I'd hear, hear back from them. I never heard any more. And I, you know, I was a student there, so, but I wasn't paying, so I couldn't really do too much. But anyway, um, the next thing I know, CERN shuts down its Large Hadron Collider for three years to retrofit it to do this, to focus just like this. Now, that's just kind of unusual to me. But they still were using head-on protons, gigantic particles smashing to bits. And then all they see is particles flying everywhere. We started with light. Light is the smallest particle there is, and there it is. And it splits. And like I said, it's 2015. So, and now I'm seeing, yes, they agree that these particles do exist and that we can exceed the speed of light. Well, let me just show you something quick. Okay, they've seen the big black particle and they've seen the point particle at Fermilab. So have we. Only we see them come from light, not from a big splash of all kinds of crazy stuff. We see it coming through here as light, and that is how light starts as a photon. It has the black ball attached to the white point particle. Exactly like Fermilab says. This is Fermilab's doodle, not mine. This is our work right here. Rod Warren and I did this. This is a muon neutrino. That's an electron neutrino. The black ball and the white ball. 
when they crash into another medium called cherry ink radiate radiation occurs this is what happens the white turns into a splash called electron shower the muon neutrino stays what they call a, a sterile muon the black one and then they reattach here almost instantly and this is what it looks like when you see the wave coming through the air and then a particle precedes the wave so I say it's going faster than the speed of light that's how this whole thing started with veritasium but now I'm going to just lay out my entire thesis on atomic vapor theory and dipole electron flood theory two separate things one of them is the particle and one of them how it is how it interacts in the world and both of them can be summed up in a matter of minutes very 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 simple now before I get into this I, I did it all so I, I you know I can't keep showing this but I did if you don't understand everything about physics and electronics and energy and light and chemistry and thermochemistry and periodicity of the periodic chart all the different rules and constants they have you, you you can't say anything because then they just have you over the bill oh you got to look up uh, Planck's constant you got to look up this that 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 Hun's rule Pauli's principle large electrostatic forces they the no human being can discuss this the only way you can do it is to present evidence and there was no evidence to present so now I have the evidence and now they refuse to discuss all right, so listen, here's Derek again, and I showed you the actual neutrinos, just exactly what CERN and Fermilab are looking to do, and they can't do it because they're hitting protons head on, getting splashes of stuff. They can't make heads or tails of it. This is just garbage. Now, here's Derek again. He's, he's gone through three and a half minutes of standard physics. This won't work because Planck said this, and well, this won't work because Einstein said this, and Hubble said that. No. It, no. You see what you see, and then you have to discuss what you see. Not just because there's some theoretical explanation that has nothing behind it. I have stuff behind it. I'm a material scientist. Now listen to this. It should be relative, the speed of light, into the true universal constant. So what would it look like to travel alongside a beam of light? Well, according to Einstein, we'll never know. Because we can't go that fast. At that speed our length would become zero, time would stop relative to an outside observer, and perhaps worst of all, our mass would become infinite. He makes that statement like it's true. Derek, I'm serious, brother. You've got to look a little deeper, man. I thought you were the deepest guy I knew. Come talk to me and we'll talk about it. Let's just discuss it. I, I know you know classical physics, yes. So do I. But you know, until you talk to me about the physics I, I can show and demonstrate, then classical physics is, 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 doesn't, is meaningless. I know it was meaningless years ago, but you can't prove something without evidence. I have the evidence. Now, you're going to have to override my evidence, my friend. But a recent experimental result has uh, suggested that neutrinos can go faster than light. Gee, who did that? Roger did that. <laughs> a recent... Here, let's just... I want to hear that a couple of times. I love the sound of that. That sounds so nice when you say that, Derek. But a recent experimental result has uh, suggested that neutrinos can go faster than light. Still, most physicists think that, well, this result probably won't hold up to scrutiny because the principle of relativity is just uh, so well established nowadays. So well ingrained. It's dogma. It's if you speak out against it, you're put up against a wall and shot. I mean, it's just absolutely unbelievable how against reality physicists are they're the worst and the second one well geologists are just as bad <laughs> i'm telling you they have us under their thumbs and if you don't say what they tell you to say they fail you in school and then they tell everybody that guy's stupid he didn't understand we told him what was right and he couldn't couldn't understand it because he's stupid but who knows perhaps one day we'll find a way to break what we thought was the universal speed limit, the speed of light. Yes, we found it. What would it look like to ride alongside a beam of light? This is a